So basically, the whole purpose of this was to show that non-deterministic machines are equivalent to deterministic ones. So anything I conclude about non-deterministic machines, that should apply to the deterministic ones as well. So that means that if I can show non-deterministic machines are equivalent to regular expressions, deterministic machines will be too. For these remaining operations that we could do with regular expressions, we're going to express those using non-deterministic machines instead of deterministic ones. So to start with, I'm actually going to redo union using non-deterministic machines to show you sort of why this was a worthwhile endeavor. So when we used deterministic machines for union, we had to do this power set construction. We had to take our two machines, make some grand machine where every state was a pair of states. Every state represented a pair of states. In this case, if we're using non-determinism, for a non-deterministic machine, we want to have a machine that'll return one, a machine that'll return one, if either of the original machines returns one. What we're saying is if I'm starting out with some sort of string and I want to know, is one of these two machines going to return one for this string? This is kind of like that, which direction in the fork is my friend's house question. So which direction should I go? Should I go to machine one or machine two in order to find the one that's going to return a one? It's hard for me to know before I start looking at my string. So we're just going to say non-deterministically try both. So from our start state, we're going to make some new transition that doesn't consume any input. It sort of goes to the original start states from the other two machines. So now what this says is I'm going to have kind of one path I'm going on where I'm running my string on the first machine and then some different path I'm going on where I'm running my string through my second machine. If either machine were to return one, then this non-deterministic machine returns one. So we're doing union. This was way easier. So this is sort of the superpower that non-determinism gives you. You can do way easier things like this. Why doesn't this work for intersection? So we could use basically the same cross product construction that we used for union in order to do intersection just by changing up our rules for which states were final states, if you recall. Why can't I use just this non-deterministic approach for intersection? Right, so basically the, the issue is that our definition of non-determinism, it's just baked into the definition for what this model of computing looks like. It says that we return one if any path, if any state we're in is a final state. If we wanted to do intersection, we wanted to say return one if like we had a final state from each machine or something like that. That is just not allowed. We can't require that as our, as our return one condition, just using this model of computing. That violates the model to say something like that. So because the model says always return one if any state is final, we're not gonna be able to just do intersection using this approach. You could still do intersection, but you'll have to do kind of that that cross product approach that we talked about last time to do it, even if you're talking about NFAs. So if we wanted to express union using non-determinism in sort of general terms, the idea is if I have some machine M1 and some machine M2, and I want a new machine that is gonna do the union of the languages of M1 and M2, I want some new machine that's doing the union of the languages for M1 and M2, the way I do that is I introduce some new start state that has these epsilon transitions to the previous start states. That's all I have to do. If this cloud, this first cloud just represents some automaton, this other cloud represents a different automaton, I'm just gonna introduce a new start state and then draw these input free transitions from the new start state to the old ones. And then the old ones are no longer start states. Okay, so now let's talk about concatenation. So we talked about how one of the rules for regular expressions is that if I had some regular expression R1 and some regular expression R2, I could concatenate the first one with the second one to make some new regular expression. And basically what this is saying is this is going to match any string where we could break it into two chunks, the first chunk matching regular expression one, the second chunk matching regular expression two. So a string matches the concatenated expression if we can separate it so that each half or each portion 
is matched by, by each of the original regular expressions. So this operation that we're doing on the regular expressions here, this is an operation that we call language concatenation. If R1 matches all the strings in some language and R2 matches all the strings in some other language, R1, R2 matches all the strings in the concatenation of those two languages. We're here, the definition of language concatenation. If I have L1 and L2 and I concatenate them, sometimes you'll see them just smushed together like that. Other times we'll put a dot in between them to represent concatenation. So that is the set of all strings such that I can find a string in L1 and a string in L2 where the L1 string concatenated with the L2 string gave me that string. This is just me describing that separation idea in the opposite order. W belongs to L1 concatenated L2. If I can find an X part that belongs to language one and a Y part that belongs to language two, which together make that string. So for instance, if I had this language is L1 and this language is L2. So L1 is empty string and then zero and then one zero and L2 is zero and then zero zero. In every possible way, I can take something from L1 and concatenate it with something from L2. Gives me a string in their concatenation. For instance, I can get zero because that was concatenating the empty string with zero. I could get zero, zero because that was concatenating the empty string with zero, zero. I could also get zero, zero because that was concatenating zero with zero. There are two different ways for me to have gotten zero, zero in the result. I could also get one, zero, zero because that was one, zero with zero. And I could get one, zero, zero, zero because that was one, zero with zero, zero. This is almost like a cross product. It's very similar to a cross product. The main way it's different from the cross product is because epsilon paired with zero would be a different thing from zero paired with zero in the cross product. But with concatenation, epsilon paired with zero, zero, and zero paired with zero are different things in the cross product, but they both gave me zero, zero in the concatenation. So this is what language concatenation means. So what we'd like to do is figure out if we have two languages with finite state automata, can I build some new finite state automaton for the concatenation of those two languages? So that's what we want to ask next so that we can see, oh, that thing that we could do the regular expressions, we could do that to finite state automata as well. So we can do this concatenation using our non-deterministic finite state automata. So our goal is we want our automaton to return one if our input string can be broken into two chunks. The first of the two chunks, order matters here, keep in mind. The first of the two chunks, m1 should return one on that. And for the second of the two, m2 should return one on that one. So we want to break it into two chunks where the first machine returns one on the first chunk, the second machine returns one on the second chunk. So for instance, this was our machine for and. This was our machine for XOR. So if I wanted to do and concatenated with XOR, I want to know, can I find for this input a first chunk that satisfies this and machine, such that this and machine will return one on that first chunk, and a second chunk that satisfies XOR. So the issue is that if I've got some sort of string, then as I'm reading this string, it's hard for me to tell when the first chunk ought to stop and the second chunk ought to begin. That's challenging for me to do, because it could be that, that like maybe, yeah, so let's say that I had a bunch of ones to start with over here. With and, this needs to be something with only ones. If I look at like just the first one, that is a string that and would return one on. Should I make the rest of the string something I try for XOR? Or should I have done something else instead? Is the question that we would need to ask. And until I look at the rest of the string, that's going to be hard for me to determine. So saying that first one went with and, and then the rest went with XOR, it could have been that that allowed both machines to return one. But maybe it could have instead been that saying the first two ones went with and, and then the rest went with XOR. Maybe that was the one that would have done it, and the first one didn't actually work. 
But the issue is, with our finite state automata, we're only allowed to ring our, read our input once without looking back. So we can't just try something and then go back if we were wrong. So instead, we're going to use this power of non-determinism to say, it might be that we should move on to the second language, or it might be that I should keep staying in this first machine. So maybe I should stay in the first machine, or maybe I should move on. I don't know which one's going to take me to my friend's house, so let's try both. So that's what we're going to do here. So basically our goal is we want to make sure, in this new machine we're building, we want to return one for any string that can take me from the start state in the first machine through some path in that first machine to a final state in that machine to a start state in the second machine through some path to end in a final state for the second machine. So to do concatenation, we have to have some way of doing that. We go from start in the first machine to a final in the first machine to the start in the, in the second machine to a final in the second machine. We somehow have to get from start to final in both machines, each for one chunk of the string. So that is our goal. If we can do that, then we have a machine. If we can make a machine that will do that, then we have a machine for the concatenation of these two languages. The way that we're going to achieve that is we're going to say every single time I'm in some final state of the first machine, that's an opportunity for me to move on to the second machine. I have the option at that point to say, oh, the rest of the input, that's going to go on the second machine. I'm done with the first machine. I've made that one work. The rest of the input can go on the second machine. But I'm not sure if it's going to, if, if, that's, if this is the right time to move to the second machine. So non-deterministically, I'm also going to stay in the first machine. So every single time I'm in a final state for the first machine, I'm going to have one of these empty string transitions, one of these empty transitions taking me to the start state in the second machine. Every single time I've made it so that the first machine works out, I'm non-deterministically saying, let's continue working in the first machine. But also, in parallel, do the rest of the input on the second machine. And if there was some way for me to make it to a final state in the second machine through that procedure, then I had something in the concatenation this machine is no longer going to be a final state. The final states in this machine are no longer going to be final. The only final states are going to be in the second machine, because I have to get to the end of the second machine to return one. But I knew that I got to a final state in the first machine, because that was the only way for me to get to, a sec to the second machine in this case. So our idea in general is if we have some machine one, some machine for the first language, some machine for the second language, then I start in the start state for the first language. Every single time I get to a final state in that first machine, I move non-deterministically to the start state of the second machine. And then the first machine's final states, I make non-final. So that is my construction. Yeah, so that should be the same thing, but without my terrible handwriting. Yeah, and non-determinism just sort of takes care of that for us, actually. So you do have to make sure you're trying every, every possible combination. So what's going to happen is every single time I end up in one of the final states of the first machine, we branch. We kind of, we see a fork in the road. So I have introduced a fork in the road for every final state of the, of the first machine, right? So... No matter when I got there, how I got there, anything like that, any single, any time I end up in one of these final states, I have a fork in the road, so I'm going to take both directions, where one direction is going to be stay here, the other direction is going to be move over there. So every single time we enter one of these states, we branch. And it could happen many, many, many times while we're processing the same string. So for instance, with this one, with this example, if I just kept getting ones, if I had a bunch of ones to start with, then yeah, every single time I'm going to say, stay in here, but then also go over there. And then stay in here again, but then also go over there. And then stay in here again, but then also go over there. For every single one, we're going to have all these branches. We're going to have lots and lots of different branches and lots and lots of different paths and so forth that we're doing. All of those many, many, many different options are all happening at the same time. We don't even have to worry about it. Magic takes care of it for us. 
the magic of theory.